Hi, and happy holidays from all of us here at the Driehaus Museum. I'm Greg Shutters, and welcome to a virtual holiday toast to the Gilded Age, where I'll be making one of my favorite holiday drinks, eggnog. Now, eggnog is one of those fairly divisive drinks. You either love it or you hate it. But most of us are really only acquainted with store-bought eggnog, which started to become commonplace in the 1960s and is, in my opinion, too sweet, too heavy, not all that tasty. Once you make this stuff from scratch, you'll never want to go back to the store-bought stuff ever again. Now, eggnog dates back to the 18th century and consists of eggs, milk or cream, sugar, and spirits. Both the alcohol and fat content here would have been considered good ways to ward off the winter cold, so it's no wonder that eggnog became a Yuletide staple. The kind I'll be making today consists of Jamaican rum, cognac, and Madeira wine in a 19th century recipe called Baltimore eggnog. The inclusion of Madeira is what makes it Baltimore, possibly because Baltimore was once a major importer of Madeira wine. This recipe was once highly regarded in the half century before Prohibition, and something similar very well may have been served right here in this ballroom at one of the Nickerson's fabulous parties. The recipe does seem to have been particularly popular here in Chicago, with a 1912 bar manual published here even going so far as to redub it Chicago Eggnog. Since this year I won't be having any big parties, I'll be making this as a single drink using our vintage-inspired shaker and glassware found in the Driehaus Museum store. However, for future use, this drink easily scales up to serve many guests from a punch bowl. So first, let's add our spirits. I'm using Pierre Ferrand's 1840 Cognac and Smith & Cross Rum, both of which are very flavorful recreations of what would have been available in the 19th century. Rum has lots of variation, especially depending on where it's made. So if you can't get Smith & Cross, another Jamaican rum like Appleton Estate or Myers will be what you want. So add in three quarters of an ounce of each. And I'm using our lovely little measuring jigger that we have here three quarters of an ounce of cognac. There we go. And three quarters of an ounce of rum. In addition to being delicious, this rum packs a punch. It's, uh, it's 114 proof, so. But that's what they would have had. All right. Now we come to our Madeira wine. Now, this really is the star of this recipe. Madeira is a fortified wine like port or sherry and is very aromatic. This wine comes from the Portuguese territory of Madeira, an island in the North Atlantic, and was especially popular in early America. If you can't get your hands on Madeira, a dark medium sweet sherry will do, but in my opinion, Madeira is worth making a special trip to find. So add in three quarters of an ounce of your Madeira, equal parts. Great. And that is our booze. You can smell it from here. It's, it's crazy. Um, so the, what makes this eggnog is raw eggs. Now, of course, there is that small risk of foodborne illness using raw eggs, but don't let that scare you off. This eggnog has been made this way for centuries. Um, and really, if you, you know, if you're mixing it with alcohol, that'll theoretically kill off any bacteria. So, you know, it's not something to be scared of. So add in one whole egg. Right in there. Great. Uh, so then add sugar, and I have some here, just about a tablespoon. So a tablespoon of sugar, throw that in there. And as you shake it, that'll dissolve. Uh, and then add in about four ounces of whole milk. We've got that here. And now most recipes for Baltimore eggnog just use the milk. But I actually like, in addition to milk, adding in about a half an ounce of cream. We've got that splattered over a little bit. Oh well adding about a half an ounce of cream just to give it a little bit more body. 
So we're gonna add a half an ounce of cream. And you'll notice, even though we're using a lot of cream here, I mean, just a half an ounce, not a lot, but it's not the same as, say, some of the store-bought stuff that's really just too thick. Just a little bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is what's called a dry shake. This is somewhat more of a modern bartending innovation that serves to whip up the eggs and the dairy into a, a froth uh, before diluting it with ice. So get your shaker ready, no ice in there yet, and then just give it a nice shake. This will also serve to uh, get the sugar dissolved and everything like that. And also, be careful, as you see here, sometimes when you're dry shaking, there's a little bit of, uh, uh, it kind of comes apart a little bit. So just be, be a little careful so you don't get eggnog all over the place. So after dry shaking, make sure we get that so we're not making any, any messes, um, add in some ice. So really, I mean, you're not looking to make this freezing cold but just enough to kind of dilute it a little bit, chill it down. You can also make a hot eggnog called Tom and Jerry, but that's, uh, that's another program. So get the ice. There we go. gonna sit here and watch me shake. It's hard to talk when you're shaking because then your voice kind of goes, uh, 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 but we're making the best of it. Okay, that should be enough. So now once you're done here, take the cap off. Oh yes. And strain into your glass. Now we're using these beautiful tall Collins glasses here from the Driehaus Museum store, but feel free to use whatever you like whatever you find festive. Oh yeah. That should be just about enough, yeah. Great. Now, of course, it wouldn't be eggnog without a little bit of nutmeg. Now, the best way to do this is to get a grater. This one is enormous because it's really more of a lemon zester, but it'll work. And then grate off a bit of whole nutmeg, fresh. You want fresh, it gets, you know, it's a lot more aromatic that way. Just do a little bit over the top. Or a lot over the top, you know, it's your call. And so there you have it, Baltimore eggnog, the perfect treat for the holidays and just enough booze to keep you sane through the end of this truly ridiculous, just absolute mess of a year. So from all of us here at the Driehaus Museum, have a wonderful holiday, and we hope to see you here real soon. Cheers.